Hey everyone, it's Mr. Jensen. Today I'd like to go over what we learned on Friday. Today is Monday. Uh, Friday we looked over a rate of change. So this is a rate of change review. I'm going to start on the left side here with something that we actually looked at in class. And then I'm going to move over to the right. This is more like a region style question for rate of change. Um, so rate of change can be found on page one of the Earth Science Reference Tables. And it's an equation that says rate of change is equal to the change in field value over divided by time. So our first question from this one that we did see in class says the change in two measurements can be found by using which math function? This math function would be subtraction. Then it wants us to write the formula for rate of change. I'm going to write it over here. And I like to write ROC, rate of change. Then I like to do a triangle for change. It's also known as a delta. And then F dot V, field value. So change in field value divided by time. And field value can be anything that you're measuring literally in the field. The idea is that a scientist would be out in the field, whether it is a mountain or underwater or in space. Uh, it's whatever field they're in or field of science that they're in. All right, so then we have our first question. Uh, our first question says, in 1913, Mount Everest was measured to be 8,839.8 meters. In 2014, <clears throat> Mount Everest was measured at 8,848.0 meters. How many meters did Mount Everest uplift in one year? An uplift just means to gain elevation or to be pushed upwards into the atmosphere. So it's actually getting taller. All right, so what I would like to start with when I'm doing a rate of change question is ROC equals change in field value over time. That's our basic equation. Then you want to fill it in with your change in field value and your time. So field value is going to be what's measured. So here it says was measured to be 8,839.8. So that's one of our measurements. So I'll circle it. Then searching the question, we want to find our second measurement, which later in 2014 was 8,848.0 meters. So typically you want to put the larger number first because you're doing subtraction for rate of change. So 8,848.0 minus 8,839.8, and it's supposed to be meters. And then we want to divide this by the time. So our first time, our original measurement was 1913. Then our second measurement here that we're using was 2014. So that was 101 years. All right, so then we will do our subtraction and then we'll divide. So I have my calculator open. 8,848. Zero minus eight thousand eight hundred and thirty nine point eight. That gives us eight point two. So I have eight point two meters over one hundred and one. Well, that's a thousand. One hundred and one years. All right, when we do this, I'll get my calculator again. 8.2 is already there, so I can just do divided by 101 equals, I'm going to round to the, the hundredth place. So equals 0 0.08. And then if you're dividing and your answer has two different uh, units, you'll do top per bottom. So this one goes first, this one goes second. Uh, meters per year. I'll circle my answer. All right, so that's like a basic practice question. So let's move on to something a little bit more challenging, like a regions question. And this one could be even more challenging because it incorporates a graph. All right, so here's number one. <clears throat> uh, it states, the average rate of temperature change in Fahrenheit degrees per hour between 6 a.m. and noon was. All right, and this accompanying graph shows temperature readings for a day in April. So we are focused on 6 a.m. and noon. 
is our second time. So if I have just read the question, I'll immediately do uh, my rate of change. So change of field value over time. Right? And then I'll try to fill in my equation. So for time, I know 6 a.m. to noon, just so you know noon is 12 p.m. That's going to be six hours. So I can already fill that in without reading the graph. So here is 6 a.m. Here is noon. In order to figure out what time it is at 6 a.m., I'm going to go to 6 a.m. I'm going to go up to where this intersects. And then I'll go over. At 6 a.m., it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit. At noon, I'm going to go up. Oops. I'm going to go over to where this intersects. And I'm going to go over. I'm going to estimate this, I think, to about 48, because it's not 50, it's not 45, definitely. I think I'm going to do 48. So I would say 48 is the higher number, so I'll do 48 degrees. Fahrenheit minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and that gives us, use my calculator, 18. So my final equation would be 18 degrees Fahrenheit over six hours. And that will equal something, and I'm gonna do my units first, in degrees Fahrenheit per hour, because it's top per bottom. So now I just have to do 18 divided by six. 18 divided by six gives me three degrees Fahrenheit per hour, which is an answer. And I would just circle it. Cool. Uh, our last example, let's check out number two. This is a Regents example. Uh, at 7 a.m., the air pressure was 1,012 millibars. By 11 a.m., the air pressure had dropped to 1,004 millibars. What was the rate of change in the air pressure? So this one's a little bit easier because you don't have to incorporate a graph. It's basically just giving you the numbers to set up your formula. So let's take our formula, rate of change. ROC is change in field value over time. Our change in field value would be the millibars. So I had 1,012 is my higher number, minus 1,004 millibars. Over the time, which was 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 4 hours. All right, so I'll just use my calculator, clear it. 1,012 minus 1,004 gives us 8. An 8 millibar difference over 4 hours will then give us 2 top per bottom millibars per hour. Right, and uh, getting a positive or negative answer doesn't matter because they should be all absolute because it's just the change. So we're not looking, these type of answers aren't looking for a positive or negative change. They're just looking for how much they changed. So even if you did 104, 1,004 minus 1,012, you would have got negative 8, and then you would have got negative 8 divided by 4 but you're just looking for how much it changed, not whether it was a negative change or a positive change in these cases. Uh, in future questions, you could be aware of that to see what they did within the hour or, or so, but for this question, you really just wanted to see how much it changed within the four hour period, which was eight millibars over four hours gave us two millibars per hour. All right, so that is a quick review of rate of change from Friday. See you later.